Okay, this is Fizz 2320 Computing 2, and this is the first video on plotting data uh, using the matplotlib library. Okay, so first of all, what's matplotlib? Well, of course, if you've analysed data um, in Python or whatever, it's not really very much use unless you can actually um, go and visualise the results. So obviously plotting your data is kind of rather important, um, and that's where matplotlib comes in. So there's actually quite a few different plotting libraries for Python, um, but matplotlib is by far and away the most popular um, and the most commonly used, and so it's the one that we recommend for this module. So um, there's actually lots of options and lots of plot types. It's a really comprehensive library, um, but it's got pretty good documentation and a nice gallery of results at uh, matplotlib.org. So here's the matplotlib website, and if you click on gallery, then it gives you a huge long list, lots and lots and lots of different types of plots. Um, and if you see the sort of a plot you like the look of, um, then you can go and click there and show you the plot, and it also shows you the source code that you used to go and create that. Um, so there's really a lot of um, ways you can see what it's doing, um, and you can see you can do sort of contour plots and scatter plots and colour plots and um, you name it, you can plot it, um, and you can play around with different colours and different styles and so on. Um, I should say that for this module you're going to be assessed on whether the plot is reasonably clear and easy to read, um, more than if it's in a particularly whizzy colour scheme. Um, and then you've also got all the documentation as well. And again, there's really a lot of documentation there that you can look up. Um, I should also say, of course, that in this module, we certainly encourage you to look at the documentation of the, uh, the standard libraries you're using. Um, and in particular, where there is example code uh, given in the official documentation. So um, the official documentation for matplotlib is here on matplotlib.org. And likewise, NumPy and SciPy have official documentation sites. So you can use any of the example code from there um, in your Computing 2 work, including the assessed coursework, without having to make special reference to it. Um, there are other rules that if you're getting code from anywhere, anywhere else on the internet, other than the official documentation, then you will have to go and um, reference it properly. And in the example in the lecture for the uh, coursework, I'll explain all about how to go and do that. Um, but anyway, for the moment, simply to go and tell you, look, there's all this information here um, that you can look at, as well as what I show you in these videos. Okay, so I say you've got examples there to get you started. So what we're going to do today is just to run through some very quick basic use. Um, so what I've done so far is I've imported NumPy um, as NP. You should look at the NumPy videos if you haven't seen this before. I've created a array X which ranges from uh, minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi, and I created a range y that's got some mathematical function there. So, very first thing we want to do is we want to import um, matplotlib. Um, so there's actually two modes you can uh, import matplotlib as. If you're just typing things away at the command, like that, the command line like this, then quite often you can use pylab. Um, so you could do import mat plotlib dot pylab as whatever um, say plt whatever um, alternatively if that's too much like hard work um, in spider under preferences in um, ipython console graphics you can automatically import uh, PyLab and NumPy modules. Um, and you see, I tend to run with that set on. Um, it's a convenience. It means things like um, the NumPy function sign and cos are there on, to start with. But, but, when you write scripts, you must do the imports properly in your script. So if you're doing a script, you must do import NumPy as NP and then for a matplotlib, import matplotlib.pyplot, and conventionally we import it as plot, plt. Um, so just while I'm demonstrating things on the command line, I'm going to do that 
explicitly here. So what I type at the command line, you could type in in a script and it would work. So we start off by importing matplotlib.pyplot. plot. So if we want to do a plot x versus y, which is the obvious first thing you might want to go and do, it's simply plot.plot plot, and then it asks you for the x data and the y data and you can just do that <coughs> and it will come back and it tell you it's created a backplotlib figure and if you've set your um, preferences up in the way that I showed in the getting started with spider uh, video then it'll also create a figure window in the background here and that's my function I've just uh, plotted there. Um, I should say the other thing that I think is worth doing normally is to issue the command plot.ion if you're working um, at the command prompt like this. So this is the um, turns on interactive plotting which basically means the plot draws itself automatically and updates itself automatically and doesn't leave you stuck looking at a undrawn plot. So normally I would just for convenience do plot.ion somewhere near the start of my code just to get that set up. Okay so there we go. Um, so that you saw was a blue line plot and that's kind of the default style. Um, after I've specified the y data I can give it a, another parameter which is going to set the format of the plot and the format string um, done in this sort of very simple way um, is normally a two character or maybe a three character string the first one of which is a colour um, so red or green or blue um, or orange um, K for black um, will do red and then the second character is um, what it should be plotting so you've got various options you can do O, R O and you'll see that gives you red circles or alternatively you can have R plus that gives you crosses R minus gives you a continuous line. I have to say that's the ones I normally use so I'll see if I can remember what the other ones do. Uh, R dot gives you little dots, smaller dots and I think if I remember rightly minus dot is giving me a dashed line. So you can play around with the the different options there and so on. So that's a nice easy way of just changing the line style or the colour as you as you add the plot. Um, actually let's go and do that again. Um, of course that's a plot um, which isn't very good because it doesn't tell you what it's plotting so you might want to put a title on it. Plot.title and there you see is added a title and put dot x label. Have I spelled that right? Yes. <coughs> um, so, so one of the other nice things you can do um, with the uh, labeling in matplot figures, matplotlib figures, is if you need to use kind of special Greek symbols or so on, it actually understands LaTeX. Um, so you'll be doing LaTeX in um, uh, physics in lab 4 at some point um, but basically it's a way of, of formatting text um, into uh, mathematical equations as well as writing longer scientific documents it's kind of almost the standard way we write um, long documents in um, physics particularly PhD theses we often write in LaTeX um, but it means you can write some uh, easy characters to get uh, different symbols and subscripts. Um, so here I'm going to uh, 
create some an X label. Oops, and I've missed out the quote and the brackets. There we go. And there you see it's created a fancy superscript subscript Greek letter as an axis label for the X axis. And obviously, as you might expect, Y label gives you the Y label. And there we go. Um, and you'll see in the help, you've got all kinds of um, options here to go and specify changing things like um, default font size and um, the uh, um, alignment and so on. It can get very, very complicated um, with all the options you can throw in. So it's certainly always worth having a quick look at the documentation on the Matplotlib website for further details. Uh, the other thing you might want to go and do is have a legend on your plot. That's simply, whoops. Ah, of course, what I've done is I've closed the plot. So, okay, let's go back and uh, replot everything. If you close the figure window, then it gets a bit confused what you're trying to do. So, there's our plot. There's our uh, title. X label, Y label. Incidentally, I'm using the fact that the IPython console here, you can tab up. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do, uh, as well as up arrow to go back through the history, you can do tab completion. So you can type in part of a command you've typed previously. Um, and um, then if you hit the, um, well, if you hit tab, it'll give you possible completions. But if you hit the uh, up arrow after that, it'll go straight to the nearest command in the history that matches. There we go. So let's have a look at the final result. And it hasn't put a legend on. Um, and that's because we haven't actually told it um, what this thing we plotted was. Um, OK, so what we need to go and do is when we do the plot, we need to say what to call this plot. So we'll do another plot, put another line on there. Um, so let's see, let's plot, um, we'll plot the same data, um, but we'll only plot every uh, third point, like so, and we'll change that to make that a, a blue triangle. And I'm adding a new thing here. Label equals points. Oops. And it's unhappy with me for something because I put the bracket in there. There we go. That's more like it. Look at our figure. And we should. Hopefully, there we go, it's added the legend for us now. So having given the, the plot a label, the legend now works as well. Um, as you saw there, I was using the um, indexing of a NumPy array. I uh, covered this in the arrays NumPy array NumPy1, um, say every third point. So from start to stop in steps of three. And that just reduced the number of data points to something a bit more sensible. OK, so that's really just a very simple introduction, um, enough to get you going with the uh, lab in week three. So what I've shown you is importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt, um, plot.ion, sorry that should be with a small p there, turns on interactive plotting, which means you can um, move around. I should also show you actually while we're here, the great thing, the reason why I like having these windows up separately, um, not only can you resize this, I can click there, I can pan around. If I uh, right click, I can expand or shrink the scale. Um, 
and um, I should be able to get it. You can also just do a simple zoom as well as a squeezing it separately. So if you control um, control right click it does a, a straightforward zoom and if you just right click you can resize it like that. Um, if you go hopelessly wrong click the home button it puts it back to what it thought was sensible and the other thing is you can save the figure and you can save it as a whole range of different file formats. Um, so uh, you can do it as um, either PNGs or as um, encapsulated postscript um, or as PDFs. Depends uh, very much what, how, what you're going to load them in for. If you're putting them into a Word document, then probably um, JPEGs or PNGs are your friend. Um, if you're writing your thing in LaTeX, I would tend to use EPS or maybe PDF as well. Um, and it will save the, the image as you've drawn it here. The only difference is, is the grey background gets turned white. Um, OK, so um, as I was saying, I've shown you very simply how to plot things. It's just plot, x data, y data, um, with the um, x and y data being a 1D array. Actually, the y data can be a 2D array, in which case you get several plots all in one go. Um, you can then give a format string which shows the colour and the point style or the line style. And then there are lots of, um, whoops, that should say keyword, not due word, um, keyword um, arguments um, to fine tune the appearance. And uh, I also showed you plot.label, x label, plot.y label, and plot.title, and plot.legend, all of which go and um, adjust the figure output.